Hello and welcome to another episode of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast. This is episode 144. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else that gun enthusiasts may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Cross, from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts. Uh, so this week we got uh, a full house. We got TJ, we got Rob, Tony, and Sean Fisher from Black Bag Resources. How's it going, guys? What's going on? Awesome. Evening. Hey. Uh, first so, Christmas is Chad, huh? Yep. Now we're into August. Yet another page on the Magpul calendar turned over. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the August photo week? of the month? Uh, it's a chick on a motorcycle. With a I heard, uh, AK. I heard Tony was doing yoga earlier. Is that going to be uh, September? Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, I was, I was really excited. I, I was actually eating yogurt. Uh, I get fit. my fingers are sticky. Ah, okay. <laughs> but he was eating out of a Magpul magazine, so you know that's okay. No, I can't. <laughs> nope. Too local. I can't have a whole yogurt in Jersey because a 15 round Magpul mag won't hold a full yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> if it's over 15 teaspoons, you just can't have that. No, the, the assault yogurt. So, uh, I'm going to ask you guys what you guys did in guns this week, and I'm assuming that Tony and Sean got quite a bit to talk about, being they had a couple events going on this weekend, didn't you? Yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do clean up. We'll let the other guys go first, because I know Tony and I have a lot to talk about. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, TJ, did you do anything guns this week? Yeah, went to uh, the range with a couple friends of mine. They they both have ARs. One of them has one that he's never shot before, and the other one he just doesn't get to shoot much. So they wanted to go to the range and shoot those. But I think that's about all we did. I found uh, it's kind of funny. I found a 308 case that was in the uh, brass throwaway bin, and the bulger was, the the primer was bulging out the back of it. That was kind of interesting. You know that somebody overloaded overloaded that thing pretty bad. How about you, Rob? Well, I wish I could say I did a whole lot in guns, but I had to take a, a business trip to Mobile, Alabama. I did take the opportunity to tour the USS Alabama, and the uh, they've got a World War II uh, submarine, which I guess you could count that as guns, because they got guns on the boat, and they got guns on the <laughs> submarine, so, you know. But those are awesome, awesome boats. I mean, I had yeah, a great time. What? The Alabama's pretty cool. We, we yeah, have stayed there the, a couple times. Yeah, that's the ship where they filmed uh, what Under Siege and a few other movies off of. That's a oh, really good... good Really good boat. Really had a good time on it. I only had like three hours on it. I could have spent the whole day on that ship. Oh, yeah. When I was in the Boy Scouts, we stayed. They did uh, like overnight things. We stayed yeah. there, I think, at least two different times. That was awesome. Getting be around, cool. Run around that ship at night and get lost. Well, <laughs> and when nobody's there. Yeah. I mean, nobody's on the boat, so it's like you get the ship to yourself. Pretty much. Anyways, that's kind of what I did in guns. Cool. Uh, I went camping. We all just uh, carried. Um, it wasn't much hiking as I thought there'd be. It was actually a lot more just drinking and then floating in the water and uh, getting collectively sunburnt. Uh, but it was kind of nice. Everyone brought their carry guns because, you know, when you're in the woods, there's no cell service. If something happened, you, you, it's you and whatever you brought with you. So it's kind of nice yeah. to, you know, bring some holsters and let them all try out some of the new holsters I got for reviews. Um I just got a bunch of the holsters from Stealth Gear USA. Uh, these are pretty sweet. Uh, they might just be in the in the running for my favorite holsters so far. Uh, they're really got a nice breathable mesh uh, backing. It's really soft on the on the inside. It's a little bit tighter mesh on the outside, but I can see the light from my monitor shining through the whole <laughs> rig. So it definitely got breathability to it. I've also got an appendix carry rig. I'm not not really found an appendix rig that works for me yet, so I'm, I'm interested to see if this this will be it. So I'll be reviewing those uh, in the near future here. Uh, I also did get a uh, that um, bulletproof vest from um, Stealth Gear. Hold on. Sorry. Not Stealth Gear. From uh, Safeguard. So it's a uh, kind of the style of like, uh, or what you'd call it, just concealed carry or concealed defense. Um, you can put it underneath your shirt or jacket, and it has the uh, Velcro on the, and elastic on the sides to really quickly throw it over your your head and put it on, passing it down. So as soon as I put that on, of course my fiance proceeds to chase me around the house, uh, not not trying to stab me, but more like just punching me. 
and I was telling her that, hey, you know, I can still feel that knocking off. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a plate carrier so she'd just be punching AR-500 instead. <laughs> uh, but besides that, uh, it was just kind of nice to see uh, my, my buddy brought the Glock 19 that I sold him, so it's kind of like when you, you know, end up selling a dog or a pet to somebody, and then you see it another year later, and you kind of miss it, and you get to play with it a little bit. <laughs> so... That's, so anybody uh, else anybody else see Ryan running around the house in his underwear like risky business and socks <laughs> and a vest with his girlfriend chasing him? Or is that just me and <laughs> that's almost yeah, you're the exactly. only one who has that fantasy about that is, Ryan. That is so an image I do not need to see. <laughs> yeah. What is it with you and all these Ryan fantasies? What? <laughs> what is up with you and all these fantasies about Ryan? They're not I mean, fantasies, dude. I'm, he sent me the video. I'm internet famous, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> or at least in his own mind he is. All right, enough about me. How about uh, Tony and Sean? Tell, me, tell us about your weekend. Uh, it was kind of jammed to the gills. We started with NJ SafeCon, which is the biggest event uh, in New Jersey as far as the Second Amendment community is concerned. I had a booth. Tony was a guest speaker. The lights went out. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah. I saw that everybody, everybody simultaneously whipped out their carry lights and created created light, huh? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I got a, uh, a surprise <laughs> commercial from Keith Penleone that's on my Facebook page. I got to share that to the business page so everybody else can see it, but it was pretty funny because he came by my table and was like, check it out! <laughs> With his Phoenix PD-35. <laughs> yeah, it was really pretty cool, though, with the gun people. It's like over 300 guests at a Hilton in Jersey when the power went out due to a huge storm. Um, because obviously the Democrats and anti-gunners in the state own a weather machine. Um, <laughs> every time we have a Second Amendment event, some horrendous weather happening, or horrendous weather event takes place. Um, everything went out. I was in the back in the green room with Keith, actually, uh, Keith Pantaleon, and we were just talking and the lights went out. So, of course, neither one of us even moved. We just reached in our pockets, boom, I came out with my stream light. Keith came out with his light. And we continued just speaking to each other, and then we were like, hey, let's go check out what's going on in the main hall. We walk in the main hall in the vendor room. Whole room's lit up. Sean has the place spotlighted like he's Batman. <laughs> um, and then we go into uh, the main the main convention hall where they have speakers and, like, over 200 people. And everything's going, and uh, Sean has already become the lighting man there and has the stage spotlit with whatever he had in stock to sell that day. <laughs> and he was lighting up the stage, and Save Con went on. Um, they were videotaping. They had battery backup for everything, so nothing actually slowed down, and it just shows how cool gun people are because they didn't leave the convention because of no electricity. Meanwhile, on <laughs> the rest of the Hilton was going bat crap crazy because they had no power. So it's like visit hall down here, convention hall down here. Everybody's cool, still walking around, talking, buying stuff. Go over to the other side. People were like, Panic mode, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> now, how many of those people on the other side had uh, their cell phones out using their uh, camera lights as a flashlight? Oh yeah, they were only uh, one or two were actually that smart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's disappointing. And those the things only have a range of about three feet, anyways. The mm. funny thing about gun people, though, anybody who was using their phone as a light <laughs> from the gun mm. side was like, "What's wrong with you? Why don't you own a flashlight? See, I told you you needed to own a flashlight. Now look at you." <laughs> Point one half. Flashlights yeah. are convenient. I've, yep. I've said the, it a the few sad times part was. The, yeah, the okay. sad part was I didn't even bring anything for sale that day. I had like T-shirts and stuff because <laughs> I really didn't think it was going to be like I didn't know how much space I was going to have or anything else. So I kept it pretty light. And uh, apparently, when the lights went out, John Willett, who organizes the whole thing, turned to his brother Mike and said, "Get me Sean Fisher." So Mike came and tapped me and said, we need every light you have. And I went, all right, let me get the four that I normally carry out of the truck, and that's what we <laughs> put the show back together with. But I had my opportunity and to a lighting rig. Yeah, that was great. That was Saturday. Had a great time. A lot of gun people, a lot of positivity. Um, and then Sunday was uh, the NRA Day at the Range, Cherry Ridge Range, sponsored by NRA ILA. Uh, the ANJPC, which is what the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club owners, 
or pistol Correct. clubs. Uh, they put it together. They asked for volunteers probably about three months ago. They came out there, put it in, um, put it in motion, and a lot of people volunteered. Uh, I got shotgun. Sean got rifle. Uh, another friend of ours got pistol. And uh, we ran through almost 300 people of all ages, races, religions, came through. Uh, I probably taught about 50 people how to shoot shotguns at uh, flying clays on the course. It was awesome from 7, 10 years old, something like that, up to senior citizens. All came through shooting the Stevens uh, 320 youth model, 20 gauge I had. I went through a case and a half of ammo and like three cases of uh, clays. Yeah, I really think you're underestimating the, the numbers there, Tony, because if you had as many people as I had come through the, the 22 rifle station, it was way more than, than 50 people. Um, I just don't even remember. Because we only, <laughs> we only spent, you know, about maybe five, maybe ten minutes per person, and we were there for a full day. So it was it was a lot, and it, it just never stopped. Um, I was having so much fun teaching teaching new people, and, and like you said, the, the variety of everybody that was there, young, old, men, women, every color and denomination you can think of, it was, it was pretty exciting to see the turnout. Um, that when the RSO came to me the fourth time to tell me to go have lunch, he was like, no, I'm shutting you down. Go eat. <laughs> he, he had to kick yeah. me out. So I wasn't about to give it up easy because there was a line behind me and people were really excited. Um, you know, first timers, some experienced shooters. Um, I had a guy come through my line who was uh, previously a competitive shooter and had given it up for whatever reason. You know, life gets busy, things like that, and was coming back to it and tried to pretend like he had never shot before and then started asking all these questions, and I went, you're not new. You're not fooling me with that shtick. And then you turn around and ask me what the twist rate on my rifle is and if this is what they use in biathlon. Come on. <laughs> nice. Uh, it was a lot of fun, man, and really, after it was over, after it was all said and done, it just felt like we did the right thing. We accomplished something. We introduced a whole lot of people that had never pulled the trigger before on anything to the Second Amendment, to a gun, and if they never shoot again, at least they know the things they had weren't evil, the people that they met weren't horrible, you know what I'm saying? It just debunked just by having that contact, that 10 minutes, maybe 5, 10 minutes with me, then with Sean, then with pistols, because everyone had a little ticket. They did uh, archery, rifle, pistol, shotgun, right? There was... Also, uh, they called it the black rifle section. There was all AR-15s. There was a high-power rifle section where they were shooting 30 caliber and up. Um, I know they had a 338 Lapua down there because you, you could always hear that one kind of stands out a little bit more over some of the other stuff. Um, I, I didn't get down there to see what else they had. But, yeah, they're, it's, it's a big range. It's a big facility. They had a lot of people there. There was food. There was, you know, they did a safety briefing before anybody went down. NRA was giving away swag. I saw a lot of people with those bright orange hats. Um, the best one was at the end of the day, uh, a, a Muslim family came through, and there were several <laughs> women in, like, the full burqa hijab uh, outfit with the NRA orange hat on top of that. And I'm like, that's that's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? When, when you're really crossing cultural lines as far as that goes, that's awesome. So, yeah, we had a great weekend in guns, and we really felt we made a difference in the culture in New Jersey just by adding to it. And one of the things I said when I spoke Saturday was, you don't have to do something big. Just bring one person in this year. I mean, you know what I mean? Just make that your thing. Just get one person. It doesn't have to be some diversity shoot. It doesn't have to be anything else. But if you want to volunteer for a thing like this that the NRA held, do it because it just feels so awesome to introduce people to this thing we love so much. And that was neat too, seeing the cooperation. What probably over 50 instructors there, all NRA yeah, certified firearms instructors of again every size, shape, and description you can think of. You know, it wasn't all gray-haired old white dudes. Um, there were a lot of funny accents and. <laughs> different different styles and appearances, you know what I mean? Yeah, we was, had a, I had a, I had an old hippie with me. 
Uh, <laughs> long hair all the way down his back. Looked like he came from Duck Dynasty. I had a guy from Chesterfield, England, that was a uh, NRA certified coach. He had a Sega uh, semi-automatic shotgun. He had an 870, and he had something else. There were Mossbergs. There were a lot of guns there, and it was just so cool. So if you ever, if you're a coach, if if you even volunteer for something like this, dude, you will not be sorry. No, it was a good feeling. We talked about it for like an hour on the ride home, just about, you know, the rush you get from that and, and meeting all these people. And, and, yeah, it's just, it's awesome. Oh, and by the way, if you live in Jersey, if you don't even live in Jersey, we're having this again next year. It's a little annoying for the second uh, uh the, the second safe con to go off and so many people go, oh, I wish I would have been there. Look, you have a year, man. It, it's, it's next year. They'll probably announce it, the date six months before. Take the time off. It's not a last-minute thing. He has a website. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, join my page. Join Simon Says Train. Go to the second is for everyone. I'll post it somewhere. You'll find it. Get out there next year, man, and be seen and be heard. There are a million people, gun owners in the state. We had, There's like, just other... There's this little app that some people use on their phone that kind of helps you find events like that. I don't. You, you guys might not have heard of it. It's pretty obscure. It's called Facebook. Um, but if you get on there, a lot of people will post that stuff. Facebook. <laughs> All the kids are using it. I'm not oh, sure like that the Pokemon Go-Go, right? Pokemon Go-Go. Yeah, Pokemon Go-Go. We've had that one. We've hijacked the show. You can have it back, Ryan. Oh, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, so getting into the announcements for this week, uh, bandwidth sponsor is Patriot Patch Co. Uh, we did put a new patch up for pre-order. Um, so it's, we're calling it the Mini Bullet Patch. Uh, it, it was available before. Legally, I can't refer to it by a name because uh, for copyright reasons. So I'm going to call it Projectile Pete. I think we've done that once before. Nice. So, uh, oh, is that the Bullet William? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that might be a little close. Oh, yeah, no one will figure that out. Yeah. Nah. So, it's uh, only one inch tall by two inches wide this time. Before, it was like four inches wide, getting pretty close. It was a little big for most people's uh, hats and things, and sometimes it's just nice to have a smaller one that fits on, like, the single strip of Velcro you got on your gear. So that's the bill for pre-order right now. We do have the Summer Brew 3-pack, which is Deer Slayer, Hand Cannon, and Tack Driver, uh, modeled off for after some of the most popular uh, American domestic beers. Not necessarily the most tasty domestic beers, but more <laughs> popular summertime drinks. <clears throat> so that's what's going on there. I did get... Um, I did some decorating in my little office here. I'll kind of redirect the camera. So behind me, I've got two patch frames I got uh, in. So I got uh, one that's almost full of all the Patriot patches, and then I've got another one next to it that I'm going to be putting our uh, patches that I've been commissioned to design for other people and that we've produced for other people. I'm going to put that on the black one that's directly behind me. So it's kind of cool I got that up in my office now. Uh, we've also got uh, just an opinion, morale patches and stickers. Uh, he's a pretty cool YouTuber. Uh, i got a uh, channel that's got a lot of videos, uh, reviews, and first impressions videos on all sorts of firearms, a lot of SIG stuff. Uh, he's a big 1911 guy. Um, he, he's a, he's a, a big gun enthusiast and just likes everything. If it goes bang, he wants to shoot it and film it. So head over to Justin Opinion's YouTube channel when you get a chance and subscribe and watch some of his stuff because uh, it's, it's really nice to catch up on someone new that you haven't found yet. So we got his patch, the logo that I designed for him after meeting him at the Stone Mountain Machine Gun Shoot. So that's 1287. And then we also got some stickers for his logo on it for 4 bucks. And then as far as the, the TGC bundles goes, uh, we've still got, it looks like, 3X, 4X, and 5XL in extremely low stocks. If you want the Gunpreneur t-shirt and the lead delivery patch, which is a USPS mail truck with a Gatling gun on the top of it. <laughs> it's a very rare patch, not available on our main catalog, so that's the only way you would get it is through this little bundle. Uh, starting at $28 with the lowest size. <clears throat> so that's available on our website as well. 
Um, check out all the, uh, let's see, uh, comment on the Firearms Insider reviews or cur current Firearms Radio Network show notes for a chance to win Patriot Patch swag, and then you got to email me your address and just tell me that you left a comment. Somebody did that, and I got a box right here full of patches I'm sending out this week, and this is, so this is for the month of July. See how that works? It's awesome. Uh, then the last bit of announcements is Blackback Resources, 10% off your $50 or more site-wide order until August 31st using the coupon code HYPERBOLE. Hey, I said it right first time. All right. Nice. Mm -hmm. I was practicing. Yay, Ryan. <laughs> yep. He's been rehearsing all week. All week. Give you him gotta, a sticker. you got to spell it right. So Google it if you have to. Hyper, H Y P E R. Hey, <laughs> screws it up. Yeah, I almost tried to pronounce it again, and then I stopped myself because I was like, "Don't risk it." Uh, no. H Y P E R B O L E. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. There. Or hyperbole. <laughs> uh, it's hyperbole. So, yep. So this week is going to be all about suppressed stuff. There's Ooh. a few new interesting suppressed products that came out uh, in the last month. So wanted to talk about that. So it's going to be an all-quiet episode. DJ, uh, it's so funny. DJ was like, I don't know if I'll be on the show. I don't because, yeah, he doesn't have a suppressor yet. And he was a little intimidated by it. But I think he's got some good insight now that he's actually looked at the products. So I know he's looking forward to it. Suppressors are fun. Absolutely. Yep. So the first one we got, this is a new suppressor from Yankee Hill Machine. Uh, we, they were at the Stone Mat Machine Gun shoot. Tony shot a fair amount of Yankee Hill stuff, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. So this is the Nitro 30, and it's a 30 cal sound, uh, 30 cal suppressor. Comes in a little kit, and it's it's kind of got a couple of features. Uh, not the, I don't want to say that it borrowed from other suppressor manufacturers, but it's implementing other design features that you can already see have come out. So it is a welded baffle design, which is tubeless, which means instead of having a tube that runs the full length and then stacking baffles inside the tube, you just weld the baffles to each other, and they form the conical shape. There's no kind of surrounding tube. So that kind of cuts down on weight and uh, manufacturing time. Uh, but it does have... Uh, interchangeable muzzle and rear cap so you can change out the muzzle to have a kind of a, a muzzle brake what they're calling it I didn't think a suppressor needed a muzzle brake on the end of it if it wasn't something like 50 cal yeah I'm starting to see that on some other designs and it just never I never understood it maybe there's a need but I don't get it well this it I've only cool. shot 30 cal uh, through my 30 cal suppressor 308 and under uh, it's not rated for anything over, whereas this suppressor, I believe, is rated for calibers as yeah. large as... Uh, 300 Ultra, Ultra Mag. 300 yeah. Ultra Mag, so you have that extra velocity, that extra uh, deflagrating powder leaving the bore. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I see putting a little bit of a muzzle brake on there to help mitigate some of that muzzle rise. You like that? Yeah, yeah smooth. that's awesome. Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, the welded tube design. Who else is doing that? <clears throat> Six hour. Yeah, uh, Six is doing it. I think uh, Silencer Co. Did they do it with something? No. No, oh, what Silencer okay. Co. is doing is the uh, the uh, removable end caps. That's right. That's right. So yeah, I think the tubeless is pretty cool because it probably gives you more internal, either a smaller external diameter or more internal. Um, volume. Volume. Yeah. And like I said, if you don't have the a tube around your baffles, you do save a little bit of weight. Yep. So. <clears throat> also, they have it set up um, so like the ex one of the external parts of the tube or something is a serial parted number. So if you have a baffle mm -hmm. strike, you don't have to get a whole new suppressor. If if you look where the uh, where the the part of the the can that goes up against the barrel. That's the actual, that appears to be a serialized part. So if one of the baffles blows out toward the end, they should just be able to unweld it, remove the end part, put the new baffles in there, put it back together, reweld the paint, and send it back to you. Yep, that's without, what they do. Maybe. Without um, the paperwork. Now, I was shooting a lot of stuff over at Stone Mountain, 
Uh, did you get a chance to get Yankee Hills or, or no? Did you shoot any of theirs? I only shot Alpha Dogs. Yeah. Oh. I, I own a couple Yankee Hill suppressors. Yeah, I was shooting the Yankee Hill stuff, and it's quiet. Um, it, it is quiet. As someone from Jersey who won't get to touch one of these unless, you know, I go somewhere like Pennsylvania or someplace where, you know, people like freedom and actually fight for it, um, I won't get to handle one of these, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was it. A lot of assumptions were made. I don't know about anybody else. A lot of assumptions were made about what a suppressor would be like, whether it be heavy on the end or you know, throw off the balance of the rifle. And it really did. It really didn't for me make it like a big deal. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. these things were. I mean, just the way it was. <clears throat> the Yankee Hill was really quiet. Um, I got a video up on my Instagram of me shooting not this particular suppressor, but another Yankee Hill suppressor. And dude. It is just awesome with a 300 blackout. All you're hearing is ding. <laughs> All you're hearing is ding of the target, like 50 or 70 yards downrange, and it's loud. <laughs> From the suppressors I've got, in my opinion, a lot of the impact or the, the shift in the bullet depends on the thickness of the barrel, the weight of the barrel, the weight of the suppressor, and the round you're firing. Okay. I mean, I, I've seen... I'm, I haven't really noticed my suppressors impact the bullets that much or impact the rounds that much. So... I mean, I might it might just be I'm not a really big, you know, suppressor shooter every weekend and all that stuff. But I mean, uh, if you're if you're using just regular supersonic ammunition, because mm -hmm. obviously if you switch to subsonic, you're going you are going to have a, a shift in point in impact that's significantly lower. Mm -hmm. um, but even shooting the same load, both without the can and then threading the can on, I do notice that it goes down maybe about an inch and a half on at 100 yards, and that's just for my my setup with the AAC, AAC Cyclone on my 30 or 308, uh, but it, it like I said, it, it can vary for every single firearm, or like what Rob was yeah. saying. So with this kit, uh, the Nitro 30, uh, you get the suppressor uh, or the suppressor body that's uh, welded, I should say. You get two 30 cal muzzle caps and two rear caps. Uh, you get one muzzle brake, and you get to choose whether it's uh, 5 eighths by 24, one half by 28 or one half by 36, depending on the threaded end of your barrel you intend to put it on, which is interesting because one half by 36, if I'm not mistaken, that's most commonly some 9mm barrels, and 9mm is a lot bigger than 30 cal, so you can't shoot 9mm through this can, so hopefully nobody makes that mistake. Uh, oh. It does come with a heat-resistant pouch made out of basophil, and it comes with a carry case that carries all, holds all the parts, um, just like any other handgun comes with a little plastic case, and then two assembly wrenches. So the the weight kind of ranges. The lowest rate, uh, depending on your configuration with the muzzle caps, is 18.72 ounces, and the heaviest is 19.84 ounces. Well, I mean, this thing says it's rated from 17 HMR to 300 Ultra Mag, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sort of like the Silenceco Omega in that mm -hmm. you know it's it can work for multiple uh, calibers. I can you was, imagine I was putting this thing hybrid, on a little but... 17 bolt gun? Yeah, hybrid is what I meant. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> they but got the... so many freaking cans out. It's hard to keep track of which ones which. Mm -hmm. uh, and you own them all, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, if I could just buy that that thirty thousand like dollar case that had every single one and all the adapters <laughs> in it, I'd be yeah. I'd be set. Yeah, I forgot about the thing. So this one's pretty cool that it comes with the like all the tools you needed. It looks like it even comes with a uh, um, torque wrench or a, a uh, muzzle device wrench with like a little slot cut in it, so you could put a torque a torque wrench on it. So they really, you know, they want to make it easy on you to install it. So that's pretty pretty convenient. That's the name of the game, brother. So the uh, the two tail caps or the end caps, uh, one is just so it can be directly threaded onto a barrel with five eighths or twenty four threads, and the other cap is the quick detach end that can be paired with the muzzle brake that's included. So if for whatever reason you don't want to run the mu their muzzle brake and quick detach quick attach this thing to it, you can just put on the direct uh, thread tail cap onto the suppressor and then just do it that way. So it's kind of nice to see that they included both methods. I don't think I've seen that yet, or not very prevalent, is giving you the option. Some people just don't like QD-attached suppressors. I don't know why. 
Um, and some people hate direct threaded for <laughs> obviously the reasons of the extra, you know, 15, 20 seconds it takes to thread it all the way down to your shoulder of your barrel. Well, there are those who will argue the direct thread gives you a more secure locking or a more secure grip or attachment, so mm -hmm. you don't get as much a aiming at round shift at 100 yards, 200 yards, or whatever. So that's why they like the direct thread. I like the QD just because I like having a, a muzzle brake on the gun when I'm not using a suppressor. And it also can act as like a sacrificial uh, mm -hmm. baffle, you know, and sure. instead of all the immediate desecrating powder leaving the muzzle, uh, <laughs> well, kind of you just love using that word. I do because it's it, it's actually applying now. I know what it means, <laughs> and I'm using it in the correct format. I have been summoned. <laughs> Go, Sean. So that that powder that's burning, you know, eroding on the the first, you know, couple inches of your suppressor, if you've got that muzzle brake on the end of it, and it QDs to it, your uh, muzzle brake is what's taking that erosion or that uh, that heat and that stress. So, and that's easy to change out. That doesn't require any red tape. You just get a new one of those. So it does look like it's a three chamber muzzle brake. Um, it seems like it'd be effective on its own. I know uh, Yankee Hill, they're no stranger to the uh, muzzle brake market, so it's got to be yeah. decent. Well, no, I mean, I've got the quick detach mounts for one of my Yankee Hill 30 cal cans, and what I like about it is some of the cans, you got like a little switch you have to flip, or a little knob you have to rotate. This one, you just drop it on and just twist it into place, and then it just locks right, it just ratchets right down. Yeah. So you just twist it. It's about a turn and a half to get it locked into place, and that's it. When you're ready to take it off, you usually have to wait till it cools down or get a pair of gloves. Then you just twist it off. There's nothing to push down, nothing to force, you know, no switches or anything to play with. It's just on, quick on, quick off. Now, the, the bag that it comes with says it's heat resist, and I wonder if it's thick enough to use as a quick glove in that situation. That would be kind of uh, interesting to be able to just do that yeah, rather than having to wait. I don't want I to mean, test it, though. <laughs> the only thing about that is a can's still going to be hot, so if you put it in the box, and depending on the foam that's in that box, you might melt the foam in the box. Right. Because I did that once. I put my, <laughs> I was at the range, and I shot shot my rifle with my can on it and put the can with the rifle on the uh, my uh, gun bag, and it's one of those cases with the foam inside of it, and it started to melt the foam. I said, oh, this isn't too smart. <laughs> so I quickly removed. So I quickly moved it off to the side where it wouldn't melt the foam in the case. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that suppressor companies don't just start including their own uh, sleeve to just go over the can and stay there. Um, you know, they can even in incorporate their own branding on the, on, you know, sewn onto it or screen printed onto it. But I was talking to to one of them at a local show, and they said that basically those sleeves you put on there will yeah. keep the heat in the can and get the can hotter, and they say they can degrade the can faster because part of the design is to dissipate the the gases but also to dissipate the heat. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of so, sense. I mean, do what you want to do. I'd call the manufacturer and say, do you recommend me putting this thing over your, this protective sleeve over the can before you start racking rounds through it? Right. So uh, we didn't mention the MSRP of this guy yet. It's only $890. So uh, 30 cal cans, that, that's pretty good price. That's really good. Yeah, I was thinking, I was looking at that, and uh, I looked on Silencer Shop just to see if they had them up yet, and they don't have this particular one. But uh, comparing them, just as an example, obviously it could vary with the, um, you know, by, by product. But uh, they have the Titanium Direct Thread uh, Phantom, which is uh, 1088 on Yankee Hill's site, and then on Silencer Shop, it's uh, 793. So it's a good bit cheaper. So that'd be awesome to see this come down, you know, after, you know, obviously that's the MSRP of, what would you say, uh, 890? Yes, uh, bucks. So you might, might knock off a 100, 150, 200 bucks, you know. So that would be really awesome. You get all this for less than, even even the 890 price seems pretty good, but even less I mean, than that, that would be awesome. You think yeah. about 900 bucks plus taxes plus a $200 you know, uh, NFA stamp. You know, you're still looking at under 1,200 bucks for a can. So I mean, and Yankee Hill. You know, I know people like to rag on Yankee Hill, but I've had good luck with all my with my three Yankee Hill cans. Yeah, they're not bad. No. You know the weight the weight of this guy. It's a little heavy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it is made out of stainless steel, so 17.4 pH stainless steel. Um, that's gonna you know not using something like uh, titanium 
Uh, that's usually where, mm-hmm. uh, like Silencer Co. likes to use titanium because that really cuts down in the weight department. Um, but it, it should be it fairly effective. Cost. Yeah, it does add a lot of cost. So you're really looking at uh, yeah, so getting value for this one. Yeah, so right at 19 ounces, uh, that's going to add a good bit. But, you know, like you said, like we both just said, you've got to kind of weigh that versus the cost because it wouldn't be $890 if it was made out of titanium. Just look at their other options that are, are titanium, and they don't have more. the... Oh, yeah, because the, like I said just a minute ago, their other ones are upward of $1,100, and they don't have two end caps and two uh, muzzle caps, right. is that what they're calling them? I guess my question is, do you really need titanium in a suppressor? Uh, well, I mean, I like my AAC Cyclone, it's 22.4 ounces. So mm-hmm. it's 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 heavier than what we're talking about right now with the Nitro. Um, but some people like to put it on their mountain gun and go hike a hill. And if you spend a lot of money on like one of those Kimber Ascents, and then you get the most lightweight rifle possible, you know, putting a a 19, 20 ounce can on the end of it is going to throw off the balance quite a bit. So, I mean, if, if you could pay, afford to go light, you know, I can see why you would. The advantages of just not having that feels like that dumbbell hanging off the end of your gun. <laughs> okay, nothing fancy. <laughs> hey, I said that in less than 45 minutes. I am not nothing fancy. <laughs> well yeah. played. And yeah, this isn't did. a six part video either. So, no, <laughs> yeah. it could be. But it ain't. <laughs> but so the next one we're gonna talk. We're actually gonna talk, talk about two integrally suppressed, and I'm I'm using air quotes with my fingers right now. Integrally suppressed <laughs> uh, firearms and an upper here. And uh, so the first one, it's it's a little. This one's really pricey, but you kind of have to talk about it because it's new and shiny. Uh, Daniel Defense has a integrally suppressed uh, 300 blackout now. It's the DDM for ISR. So Daniel Defense M4 integrally suppressed rifle. So it's specifically optimized and dedicated for 300 blackout. Uh, it's built around a 9-inch uh, cold hammer forged barrel. It's fluted uh, with a target crown, and then they affix a suppressor to the end of it. So it's not truly an integrally suppressed barrel like they'd have you believe, um, but you ain't getting that can off. So. It does give you a shorter overall length, which would be in the realm of a short-barreled rifle and require two stamps, but because they permanently affix the can to the barrel, it is only a one stamp. You're basically just paying for the suppressor device on the rifle and nothing else. So it's it's still a standard uh, length rifle. I believe with the suppressor, it adds, it makes it 16 inches total. So everyone will go, hey, nice SBR, and then you can um, smugly correct them. Oh, it's not an SBR. <laughs> <laughs> it's a faux integrally suppressed that I spent three thousand and fifty dollars on. Yeah, seems like for that price you could just pay for the two stamps. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> you might as well get the SBR in the freaking uh, can, and that way you can use the can on other guns. Very good. Very good points. My opinion. I don't hey, have any problem. What I, did. I don't have any problem poking fun at Daniel Defense, so bring it on. <laughs> what I else? Mean, do it you looks have? cool, but I think if I were to do that, I'd rather just say, "Give me a, a threaded barrel at the end, and I'll just SBR it, and then put a can at the end of it." Because the bottom line is, I don't think there's very many states where you can own a, mu- a silencer without own and not own a uh, SBR. Most of them, yeah. you can own both, or you can own none. I can see where it could save on some of the headache of having to do two stamps and wait for two stamps, but, but then, if the you nice follow thing both about at the same the time, AR they're going to come though, back around the same time. The, but TJ, the nice thing about the AR, the AR platform, though, is if you SBR the AR, you actually SBR the lower. So you right. can put any rifle up or you want on it. So you can have a short barrel 223, a short barrel 300 blackout, a short barrel, you know, if you want to have a 5.56 or a 9mm, or even mm-hmm. if you do like a 308 or whatever. With a different, you know, with a bit with the bigger lower. I mean, yeah, because that, that's what that's one of the things I did is I got a, an SBR lower and I can put whatever upper I want to on there. Right, it'd be more uh, frugal to do it that way. Mm-hmm. You can you can use it for multiple builds. One All thing right. that kind of stood out to me is uh, with that suppressor being permanently attached, you are married to Daniel Defense's handguard system. 
Yes. You can't you can't just you know pop the barrel off and slide the barrel nut off because the silencer is going to block you from doing that. So that's kind of one yes. thing. And it, it does come with a what is it like a 15 inch key mod handrail? Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. think it was 15. Yeah, it was I mean, at least they give you something. They give you a, a good handrail, but if you for whatever reason don't like it, then you have to. You're stuck. I mean, yeah, you're just stuck. Like, well, here's the thing: uh, if you're dropping three thousand fifty dollars on something, Daniel Defense, you're more than like a fanboy anyway. Uh, <laughs> so you, you have probably you've already drunk the Kool Aid, right? Yeah, yeah. You you've sipped on the Kool Aid, liked it, and now you've just chugged it and licked the bottom of the glass, and you're running your finger around as deep as you can get in it. Because why are you doing this? Um, this costs what? At least a thousand dollars more than anything else from anyone else because it has DD on the side. Is is it yep. that much more expensive than other stuff? Yeah. yeah I like no. the DD. I want the DD. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. double D's. I, I, so you heard of course, first, you know, Rob wants the DD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's why Rob lives in that gay hotel room he's in right now. He's looking for the big D's. Does, um, does the first D stand for dirty, Rob? Yeah, and the yeah, second D yeah. stands for Richard. So, uh, <laughs> hey, picture you. So, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you're not the only one. All right, so I haven't shot down your defense rifles. I have had, uh, excuse me, ha I haven't shot down your defense's suppressed rifles. I've shot down your defense rifles. Um, but for this particular review, I went online and I checked out Daniel Defense at SHOT Show, Daniel Defense at NRA Show. And when asked the question, why should people buy Daniel Defense's suppressed 300 blackout, this was the answer their rep gave. It's a family company. And we do quality work. Yeah, so does everybody else. Dude. Wow. I, I, I got, got, what are you bringing to the table? <laughs> Barnes Precision Machine. I, no, I'm just looking for the company. This is the company rep at a trade show when asked, what do you bring to the table that no one else does? We're a family company. <laughs> no, they brought the <laughs> copper-coated gun, right? Yeah, I'm just like, hey, dude, it's not I'm putting words in your mouth. It's not it's a writer. It's it's, it's your internal sales dude. Uh, no. Well, I mean, their their quality is is pretty high compared yeah. to some other ARs that are you know sub a thousand dollars. You know, they obviously did, they did the Cerakote on this guy. You know, Daniel Defense is really getting into the Cerakoting their their rifles or lowers the uppers and the handguard, and then having a matching uh, buttstock to go with it. So just running through the specs, I mean. Uh, you know, upper receivers, mil spec with the indexing marks and M4 feed ramps. Uh, it does not look to be billet. It looks all these both look like both receivers look to be forged. So why it costs three grand and it's not billet? That's my first question. <laughs> the uh, the barrel chromoly vandium steel uh, cold hammer forged. Like I said, one and eight twist, nine inch, eight. Uh, blah blah blah. Bunch of marketing speak. Uh, chrome lined is all you need to really know. Uh, that integral suppressor is a 17-4 uh, pH monolithic bathal with a high temp Cerakote C finish and it's pinned and welded. It's all stainless steel. Uh, the gas system is a, they call it the Daniel Defense ISR integrated gas block uh, pistol length direct impingement. So I think that's a adjustable gas block that uh, Daniel Defense owns the patent to. So thank goodness for that, because if I can't take the can off, I at least want to be able to tune the gas system a little bit. But Ryan, uh, if we can't get the handguard off, how do we adjust the gas block? There's got to be a hole that you can get a tool through. Hey, Maybe now. It, hey now. Well, I think you can take the handguard off. You just can't take the barrel nut off. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. But Yeah, there probably it's... is some kind of access hole, I would imagine. Hey, here's something really cool. Hey, for three thousand dollars, you can get a mil spec bolt carrier group. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! But this, the gas key is properly staked. Oh, it, that's that's oh, rare, okay. right? A properly staked one? I take it all back. This How is do you not properly stake a gas key. Uh, you use hog instead of stake. I don't know. What the heck is this? <laughs> 
I mean, does, I my, does it come with a New York steak? That's what I want to know. No, no New Jersey. Go. New Jersey steak. <laughs> Delmonico. There you go. Ooh. So it's got like their, their buttstock and pistol grip. It's got their little uh, polymer with the matching color and the soft overmold rubber with kind of like the snakeskin texture. That's pretty much the specs. You need, it looks like it comes with a double D 32 round magazine. No, we'll, well see on the side. The picture, says... Yeah, the picture says that, but the side says it comes with a 30 round P mag. So that's yeah. interesting. I would imagine it would come with their magazine. They probably just haven't updated the uh, product sheet yet or something. Yeah. I don't know. And it, does come, not that old. it does come in a full latch uh, plastic card case. Well, that's good. Okay, one, that's one cool. big, okay big deal. <laughs> one of my big things, I've talked about it on here before, is why Why does this $3,049 rifle not have a set of sights on it? I... <laughs> I just I always uh, I've, I've talked about it before, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. But stop selling guns without sights, people. Like they they make their own sights for they sell them for 125 dollars. So I'm sure in that 3,085 or 45 whatever I just said dollars, they could work in. Yeah, but that would cost 3,170 dollars, Ryan or TJ. <laughs> no, he makes a very good point. I mean, for 125 bucks. Throw in your own sights so I don't have to throw in your competitor sights on the right. rifle. And you know they're not manufacturing these things for 125 bucks. It probably costs them 20 bucks to make them. They're 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 well making up the price in the you know three thousand dollars you're spending on it. It just seems to me it just seems you know you just dumped all, all this money and we're not going to give you the courtesy of being able to aim it right out of the box. Well, is the you, only guy you, on the on the chat right now who owns a business that focuses on the secondary market? Uh, I don't appreciate you guys trying to cut me out of the operator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a point. We're, we're pretty much ragging on Daniel Defense. So what you need to do is you got to buy your rifle, your Daniel Defense rifle, then go to Black Bag Resources and buy some front rear sights. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell you what I'll do. I'll buy a cheaper rifle, then I go to Black Bag Resources, buy a whole bunch of nice crap to put on it. <laughs> or you can go and, that route. Yeah, and if you I'm use uh, and if you use discount code Hyperboil, uh, you get ten <laughs> percent <laughs> off. Damn. There you go. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on. The next I got an integrally suppressed upper. Um, this is from Liberty Suppressors. And I actually hadn't heard of this yet until I actually got asked, uh, commissioned to draw it for some ammunition packaging. Uh, so that's what I get to work on this week. Uh, so then I actually get to look at the product because, you know, i got to draw the thing. And it's pretty cool. So it's called the Liberty Leonidas, and it's a, you know, 300 blackout integrally suppressed upper. Uh, the MSRP is about 1850 up to 2130 depending on certain... Uh, features that you'd like to add. So specifications, uh, the length of the suppressor module is 13 inches. So this is an actually integrally suppressed barrel when you're talking about a 13 inch suppressor module. Uh, combine that with the length of the barrel assembled at 17.4 inches. So just under 18 inches long. Uh, so that means the barrel is about eight and a half. Uh, approximate weight of the suppressor parts is 28 ounces altogether. Uh, the diameter of the suppressor is 1.625 ounces. I'm sorry, not ounces, outside diameter. And the uh, approximate sound uh, attenuation is uh, 119 decibels to 124 decibels is the average. So Liberty can or Liberty Suppressors, uh, LibertyCans.net is the email address. They make some pretty good suppressors. I've seen a lot of good stuff from them. And now they have this uh, this upper that you can slap onto any of your lowers, and you'd be in business. Uh, so kind of the same theory is that hey, you've got a suppressor on a short barrel. It makes it past 16 inches. So whatever you lower you put this on, it's not going to be an SBR. That's going to be over 16 inches, and then you're just paying the tax stamp on the actual suppressed barrel. Yeah, um, I think uh, this is more in line with what you were talking about a minute ago. With you know, you're paying all that money for a you know a forged upper, but this one comes with a, a billet upper. Yes, so that's good to note. You're getting a little more for your money that in in that regard. Yeah, I uh, actually shot this at Stone Mountain. 
<clears throat> at the Stone Mountain Machine Gun Shoot. Dude, this thing made a Yankee Hill sound loud. And mm-hmm. it was uh, this it was awesome. That's the picture I posted up that you guys shared on Instagram. Uh, it is it is really really quiet, like really quiet. I was talking to uh, who was it? Les. Les said he was. Oh no no, it was someone else. Uh, said they were there all day, and that Liberty suppressor, the Leonidas, was the quietest one of everything shot all day when using subsonic wow. 300 blackout ammo. Um, I, think, I think that was Les because he was right across from them. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Les Schaefer from Le- uh, Schaefer Precision Gunworks. Uh, he was there also, and it was just really quiet. I shot it. John was a great guy. That was the sales rep that they have out, and he had his personal rifle, and we were shooting that, and it was it was really smooth. It was not heavy at all. Uh, it was just really well made. I was kind of goo goo gaga over it, and I was trying to you know leave with it, but you. Know, know people and I can't have it in the state so so they got to keep their stuff but the <laughs> price the price is really on point if you're going to do something like this and I just really liked it I mean I was really blown away by it and the glass they had on top of it because they had uh what was that what's the vortex the high-end vortex uh one to six the one to six from vortex strike eagle no, the Strike Eagle is like six hundred, uh, four hundred bucks, I think. This the one is PSPAST. The Viper. The Viper. Viper. Viper, Viper yeah. PST. Yeah, he had. Look, I was having a Rain Man episode just then. The, the, Vi- yeah, the Viper, the PST. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely the Viper. <laughs> oh, I, I thought, I, th- I thought it was, I thought it was something shocking you from uh, Magpul because you were. Not a, <laughs> I think they have a buzzer set up in you, so you can't talk about anything. But Magpul. <laughs> But, so uh, let me let me see if yeah. uh, you guys have looked into this too much. The option A and the option B seem yeah, you saw that. it uh-huh. seems a little poorly uh, worded because right here option A it says it comes with the upper charging handle, bolt, barrel, uh, yeah. handguard, okay. suppressor, everything, and then yep. it says uh, save for only two hundred dollars, two hundred eighty dollars more. You can get everything. You can get all the titanium yep. parts, but then it says. You, parts will need to be supplied by the customer. Uh, upper gas block, e, the uh, no. rail, barrel. What are you uh, talking the, about? TJ? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing on here. Am I reading No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about you've got option A for 1850 for the upper. Uh-huh. And if you want to do a titanium upper, save a half a pound, for 280 you, they'll give you a titanium. I'm assuming a titanium yeah. can. That's and then it. option B is... You've got a rifle that you want to have oh, a quasi SBR, eight and a half inch barrel with the can. You send it to them. I'm assuming gotcha. they'll chop the barrel, thread it, and send it back to you with a, or send it to a somebody to a form four FFL to transfer the uh, silencer to you. Okay, so I was yeah, thinking so option B was the can... titanium option, but it's not. I, I read that wrong. So I'm B... assuming that since they're going to be doing the manufacturing, they'd have to ship it to an FFL or someone well, who can do the form four transfer. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. So when it says uh, upgrade to the titanium core, the core they're referring, referring to is the actual core that suppressor the uh, the monolithic right. yeah. part. I'm okay. guessing because it looks like a mono, it's a monolithic baffle stack from the. If you look at the picture in option B, I see what looks like a monolithic baff, baffle stack. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I just confused that. So basically, mm-hmm. what you're buying in this option B, what you're doing is you're buying an $850 suppressor to add on to your own. Upper that you already have, essentially. Yeah, I'm and assuming they, they have, install it. I think. Yeah, I think you have to ship it to them. They install it, ship it to your FFL, and then they'll transfer it to you. Right. After you there pay you the two hundred dollar tax stamp. So if you already have a three hundred blackout yeah. rifle, you can just send them the send them your upper, and they'll build it, build this onto that. So that's pretty cool. And I'm telling so, you, after handling it, it blows me away. It, it really blew me away because I did shoot the Yankee Hill stuff. I did shoot the uh, Silencer Co. stuff. And I, the only one I didn't get to was what Ryan shot, which was Alpha Dog. Yep. So the, uh, when, if you go with option A, you know, just to get the whole upper, uh, what it comes with is a Seekins billet upper with a forward assist dust cover. Um, so Seekins makes some really good stuff. Uh, it comes with a Bravo Company a gunfighter medium charging handle, a uh, 
Nickel Boron, or I forget, the, is that Nickel Boron? Yep. The M16 bolt carrier. Boron. Group. Yeah. Uh, the 1 and 8 twist batch barrel, 300 blackout. The Seekins 15 inch MCSR free floating rail. And then obviously the suppressor assembly and uh, com- custom profile and fitted gas tube. Hey, is that a bulk carrier group? It didn't say anything about it being staked correctly, did it? No, <laughs> I don't think it is. See, see that's, that's why that Daniel Defense is worth the other $1,200. Junk. <laughs> so supposedly it's enhanced for reliability with low energy subsonic loads, that bulk carrier group. So that's usually what you want to, to tune. You want to tune the, the gas block. You want to tune the get a, a heavier weight or a lighter weight bulk carrier group, well, and then you want to put some kind of fancy buffer in the end, a heavier buffer. Well, really, with that, it's just spring. a 16 style bolt, which is or bolt carrier, which is naturally a little lighter because it's got more cut out of it. Well, what I noticed with the suppressors there at the machine gun shoot. Now this is all I'm going on because this is the only time I'd ever shot suppressors. Um, you didn't... Yankee Hill had some of their own ammo. But you pretty much purchased ammo for everyone else's suppressor. So mm-hmm. that Leonidas was the only one, by the way, that Liberty Suppressor had there. So it's like everybody shot it with every bit of 300 blackout that they could buy from the vendors that were there. So <laughs> Subsonic, Supersonic, different manufacturers, Gym Tech. I mean, it was just everybody's 300 blackout ammo got ran through that one rifle all weekend long. And it was still kick butt, and it still worked. I didn't hear about it not working. How about you, Sean? No, I think it was probably one of the only guns that didn't go down. It seemed like everything else at some point or another had to be pulled off the line and, and cleaned up or something tweaked, you know. And I don't, I don't remember anybody ever saying, um, I'm waiting for that because they had to tech it. So, I mean, this is just, again, one rifle, one weekend, but it was in the rain, in the mud, and just using random ammo from wherever these people purchased it from. And a couple hundred people shooting it. Yeah. Yeah, this is so. like a good... Uh, upper. I, I just personally prefer to have a cam that I can move from rifle to rifle, my opinion. And one thing, if you're looking at having them do the uh, thing where you send them your upper and they send you a completed SB, well, quasi-SBR, integrally suppressed gun back, you might want to take a look at the requirements for the barrel and the requirements for what you have to send them because they're very specific about what they want to be sent to them. Yeah, they... Uh... Well, it says one of the one of the products you must provide is the Seekins 15-inch MS, MCSR free-floating mm-hmm. with a minimum ID of 1.8 or equivalent. So I don't know. I guess they'll take anything that's just their recommended. Maybe they have a deal with Seekins, and that's their preferred one, but you can use anything else with a proper uh, internal diameter. And the thing is, this is just like the Daniel Defense gun we just looked at where you've got an 8-inch barrel and a silencer hung at the end of it that's t- basically tacked or pinned to the barrel. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not a true integrally suppressed gun. In my, I mean, from what I can see, it doesn't look like it's truly integrally suppressed. So, anyways, that's just my opinion. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of more of an assembly than uh, mm-hmm. a, what we're familiar with when we hear integrally suppressed. We think it's a, a big old fat bull barrel all the way down, and the um, it's, it's ported on the inside, and the gas has chambers to expand on the inside of the barrel itself, not a barrel that's being mated with a su- actual suppressor and baffle stack of some kind. I guess the term is getting looser as manufacturers yeah. are trying to kind of... It sounds cooler. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's, it's, it's all marketing. It's marketing. It is not the terms changing. It's just it's blatant marketing and a lot of new people coming into the community that don't know the difference anyway. Yeah. So it's not necessarily integral. It's just a little bit more problematic, <laughs> or it's permanently attached is what it is. Exactly. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's a and weld is the kind of nonsense. Is. Yeah, it's the nonsense we go through in Jersey, that everything has to be pinned, welded, and, and quote unquote permanently attached, so that you can't take it off. Well, if you understand oh. how stuff works, it's not hard to break a weld to knock out a pin or drill out a pin. 
So how permanent <laughs> is this it's really? It's really possible. Please don't be listening to this Dianne Feinstein. The hell with Dianne Feinstein and all the rest of the anti-gunners. <laughs> you know what? Tony, i got a question. Could you buy that, uh, if you look at the uh, the baffle stack or the uh, monolithic baffle stack that is, could you buy that, tack it onto a rifle in Jersey, and call it a uh, muscle break? I think so. Oh, because just, that's not what the manufacturer does. Yeah. They just settled on that SIG case sure. saying that SIG, SIG lost that uh, that argument exactly. that with the, uh, what was that, the M MCX? M yeah, the yeah. MCX. Yeah. They, yeah. they tried. Where they tried to do the thing with it where it's got a 10 inch long, uh, basically a monocore baffle as what they were calling a muzzle brake, but then all you got to do is buy a $200 tube, throw it on the end, and tighten it down. And then you have a suppressor, but the ATF didn't like that too much, so they they shut that down. Uh, yeah, but it's like really amazing. That... It, it's really amazing, truthfully, that I mean, any suppressor being built in your garage is a two hundred dollar tube, and yeah. I don't have to wait for permission from the ATF to really do it. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's just really annoying, annoying <laughs> with the stupidity that goes on with the infringement on your rights and the made-up rules coming from bureaucracies. I mean, I know this isn't that what this is about, but, dude, suppressors are pretty much mandatory in some countries. Yep. And here we just made it up in the, based on movies. <laughs> that Made up or reinterpreted rules? Yes and yes. Fabricated. But, um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's full-on fabrication of nonsense. Why we require every car in the U.S. to have a muffler and then ban suppressors and make you file for a two hundred dollar tax stamp and jump through all these stupid hoops makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. This should be filed under environmental protection and personal safety as, as a noise reducing device to protect your hearing and provide that benefit to the community. And instead, somehow we allow boneheads who know nothing about anything to dictate to the rest of us what we're. I'm sorry, I uh, I had one cup of coffee too much today. <laughs> Hey, just remember something is suppressors and mufflers were both developed at the same time. How about it? Believe that or not. Actually, I think one of them was uh, done by the same guy, Maxim Sun. Oh. Ira Maxim Sun. So. It's just it's just annoying, dude. Um, especially when I live in a state like this and I can't have this stuff because. That's it. You think Barbara Streisand? What? BS, Barbara Streisand? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a family so, friendly show. We got to keep it friendly, you know. One thing I did notice is that you know, with the outside diameter of that can on the Leonidas, uh, 1.625, and the inside diameter of that Seekins rail is 1.8. So subtract those two numbers and then divide that by half. That's the amount of space you have between the key mod, the sides of the handguard, inside to the can. So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom of the page, they basically show, hey. If you want to mount key mod rails all the way at the end where the, the big hulking suppressor covers up um, the inside, you're going to have to take your Dremel out and file down some of those screws so they don't press and mar into your uh, suppressor and so that you can get your rails down tight. Hmm. So, so. I, Everything was going good until you like made me do math, and now I have no idea. <laughs> you said, I, I had subtract. to do that. I've had to do that Bye. before, trying to get fancy. That's why I kind of ditched the whole thing of, like, oh, trying to get a, a can sucked up into my handguard. So is that uh, why they use key mod on this instead of M-Lock, because they can get a flatter profile with the uh, connection points on the back side? I don't know. I don't, I don't think okay. it's flatter. No, they do it just because they like the rifles to look like they came from Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you ask real nicely, they'll, they'll throw on an M-Lock uh, instead. Because I know Seekins makes both. So. Yeah. Okay. Actually, they, they do not make... Yeah, they make a 15 M-lock, 15-inch M-lock rail. Yeah. Anyway. Can we yeah, go I'm back to Ryan Cross's Rain Man impersonation? I can just tell him, key mod sucks, right? Chad said... <laughs> yeah, Chad definitely, definitely said sucks. That nobody wants key no. mod anyhow. It's M-lock. M-lock all the way. M-lock. 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 M-lock is a, is a superior mounting device. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Definitely superior. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Yes, superior. Superior. It I'm, really I'm, is, I'm and I feel like it, it, this is 1984 all over again, and we're going to have the debate between Betamax and VHS, and somehow the better product is going to lose, and we're all going to be stuck one. with Key Mod. 
Exactly. That's why we went with VHS instead of Betamax. No, actually, there's a reason we went with VHS instead of Betamax. Well, this is not the the audio, the <laughs> AV podcast, so we're not going to get into that nerd. We're, we're not going to get into that, but Ryan's second kid, his name's going to be M-Lock. I'm just letting you know that. I thought it was going to be P-Mag. It might be both. It might be M- M-Lock, P-Mag... Twins. Uh, stealth stealth M- Gray. MP Twins. <laughs> Twins. Yeah. M-Lock, P-Mag, get down here. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. M-Lock, so P-Mag. Get, now, guys. Get your, get your sister <laughs> flat, Dark Earth. <laughs> we're running even late. Though, even though Chad's not on the show, he wants it to be known that we're a bunch of dang Magpul fanboys. I'm not. <sighs> All right, so that's the uh, that's the products for this week. Uh, we don't have a review because Chad's not here, and I had a Good really you, I had a hard weekend full of booze and uh, sun, so I didn't get one done either. I should have done one done next week. I'm gonna try and get like two or three done at the same time. Maybe we'll do a shorter show and squeeze in a couple reviews in one show or something. Yeah, and another thing, I really can't stand Magpul stuff. I mean, it's nah, cool. I'm just totally I'm just say. I'm just, it's just horrible, so I'm just showing everyone my Magpul All sling. Of his Magpul collection. My, my Magpul sling and my Magpul handguard. Yeah. And his hat what's, and his poster. What's sad is that I think I have some M-Lock stuff that's still in the package. Like, I thought I, I was like, oh yeah, I need this bipod uh, stud so I can put my bipod up on my rifle. And it's still in the, like, sealed in the package, and it's been sitting there for like two months. I'm like, well, maybe I didn't need that so soon. And your point is? I don't know, just... okay. Hey, I've okay. got tons of gun stuff still locked away in boxes. First and step is, is admittance. For those of you oh. who are listening to this and not watching it on YouTube, as Tony was talking about how much he hates Magpul, he was holding up the packaging for all the stuff that his dog <laughs> Myad chewed on. And, uh, by the way, I know I know Ryan got this. Magpul's new DACA pop pouches come in different colors now. Ooh. Yeah, they come in stealth gray and then high visibility yellow and red. I get those emails. Ryan would know about that off the top of his head. I would. Yeah, of course he is. I do and have two. Orange. I do have two pouches. Uh, one carries my toiletries, uh, my toothbrush and stuff when I am traveling, and the other one I leave in my vehicle, and it contains my license and registration and all my uh, important pride. stuff. Pride. Pride. It's all your pride. <laughs> as, as I'm thumbing so... through this Magpul Dynamics Precision Data Rifle Data Book. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. You're yeah. thumbing through so it Ryan, like you don't have you it memorized. You need right. to take your wife's car to the grocery store or your girlfriend's car to the grocery store and you get pulled over, you're going to be hosed because your driver's license will be in your other your car? What? I thought you said you left your license in your uh, Magpul bag in your car. No. God. Timestamp. Damn it. What? I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the uh, next thing we're going to cover... Brian's getting sleepy. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, second Brian, this like one... it's 5 o'clock where you're at, brother. 631. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. so, <laughs> so let's get into the second is for everyone diversity shoots before I go crazy. <clears throat> what do you got? Yeah, let's, let's, let's kill all this chitter chatter because it's my time now, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> the second is the first part for Tony. Black bag resources. <laughs> <laughs> the second is for everyone, sponsored by Black Bag Resources. Um, second is for everyone, diversity shoot is coming up next Thursday, August 11th, 6 p.m. Gun for Hire Range in Woodland Park, New Jersey. It's gonna be awesome, awesome, awesome. Be there, be there, be there. Um, we're gonna have uh, great prizes as usual. We're gonna have shirts. We're gonna have hats. We're gonna have tees from a lot of different companies. If you want to see some of the swag that will be available, go to Simon Says Train on Instagram, and bam, there it is. Uh, we're also gonna have food. That's right. I got tired of being hungry after this darn event, and I'm buying food for everybody. <laughs> Tony, I wouldn't think you like to eat food. Yep, yeah, hey, listen, why don't you sit there and you just wait for that guy to catch a predator to find your room, all right? <laughs> just for those of you listening to the podcast and not watching it on YouTube, Tony's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need that narration on this podcast from on now. <laughs> okay, for those of you not watching on YouTube, uh, Ryan Cross is a Magpul fanboy. <clears throat> 
Oh, they know that already. <laughs> no, really, his room is flat, dark earth. I swear. <laughs> no, it's going to be bad. The second is for everyone diversity shoot. Uh, the second is for everyone dot com is now up for your viewing pleasure. It also will every, every time I host an event, it will have the next event on there, uh, and soon you'll have the ability to purchase tickets online. All right, that's what's going on with the second is for everyone diversity shoot. So what when's that uh, second is for everyone private Snapchat that's uh, premium prepay only coming out? Oh, we're developing that because it sounds like an awesome idea. I know you're a ton in cheek, but I need to make money with this thing somehow because it's <laughs> killing me. It is killing me. I'm doing this because they made me angry and I became a Second Second Amendment advocate. Um, I have no idea how to monetize the Second is for everyone. So right now, come and get it. I'm giving out as much as I can. I'm, I'm information. Second Amendment groups come out and speak to you. Uh, if you haven't shot a gun, uh, if you want someone to shoot a gun, but you're not confident enough to coach them, I have NRA instructors there. If you don't own a firearm and you have a couple of guys from work that keeps whispering to you at the water cooler, hey, man, I, I want to shoot a gun, this is the place to go. We reduce the price uh, from 65 an hour to $10 to come shoot. $10 an hour in Jersey to be entertained for three hours. Get information, shoot guns. If you don't have a firearms ID card and you want one, I will have paperwork for you. If you want to speak to the NRA ILA, they will be there. I'm telling you, this is mu as much information as I can pack into one afternoon for someone who wants to learn about the Second Amendment. If you just want to show off your guns to someone, bring them out, shoot them, let other people shoot them. I'm trying to make this into an awesome event. Oh, yeah, and for $5, $5. You can uh, enter a raffle and win at least minimum 100 bucks worth of stuff. Plus, I have a Battle Horse Knife Comanche that I'm putting up for auction. It's a $130 knife, and it's like three weeks to get one. I will have one. You can walk out in your hot little hands Thursday, next Thursday night. Whoever wins the auction gets the knife, including cool. a leather sheath. Nice. nice. Five dollars, huh? The auction, the auction is an auction, but uh, raffle tickets, five dollars. Lots of knives going to be raffled off. C K R T, Kershaw. Um, what else, Sean? Buck. And, yeah, there's, uh, Camillus. there's so you go through so much stuff at these events; it's ridiculous. Um, and and really, if you're within fifty miles of Gun for Hire, you need to get your butt over there because I have to hold Tony while he cries every week at all the <laughs> awesome stuff that flowed through his fingertips that he didn't get to keep any of it. Um, and and the behind the scenes stuff is is really what you got to give Tony a pat on the back for because every Monday, uh, Tony spends all day calling manufacturers, calling sponsors, hounding people to give him free stuff for you that I think he's kept one coffee cup so far. And I've kept, I've sure, kept the Ruber sure, coffee cup. Yeah, in a couple of years when this thing's really, really big, he's going to sign it and auction it off for like $1,000 as part of his pseudo nut and fancy, I touch this and now it's worth more <laughs> routine. <laughs> it's it's going to be at the big cartel, uh, Tony.com. No, but I'm just joking. But uh, listen, guys, come to this thing. It's really worth going to. It's a lot of cool stuff. You're going to want to be there. Tweet. Oh, Make sure and by the way, what's that? if you want to see the stuff, go to Simon Says Train on Instagram. I post a lot of photos up. So if you want to see what kind of gear you could possibly win, go there. Nice. And uh, let's see, wrapping up the podcast, uh, send questions or comments to uh, the new email address, gungearreview at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. And be sure to visit the Firearms Insider website for reviews and industry coverage. So thanks, guys, for joining me on this podcast. It's always a pleasure to have everybody in here. Thank you for having us out. Yep. yep. Thank Talk. you, sir. Everyone have a good week. Shoot safe, and I will catch you on the next episode. Y'all be good. Is that Hi, a guys. tan, or did Ryan get a full-body FDE tattoo? I am, of course. Here. I'm glowing. I'm bronze. <laughs> <laughs> Burnt bronze, huh? Okay. Burnt bronze. <laughs>